Hi everyone, um, I'm Kat. Uh, I'm a designer at the Jet Propulsion Lab in Pasadena, California. Uh, and like the title says, I'm here to talk a bit about how NASA's JPL leveraged the skills, expertise, and knowledge of a collective that has been pushing the boundaries of space exploration to create a ventilator in just 37 days. Um, so I'll give you a little bit of background information about JPL and how concepts become missions, and then I'll dive a little bit deeper into the design and development of the ventilator itself, as well as a little bit about my contribution to this task. So let's get started. Um, the Jet Propulsion Lab is a federally funded research and development center under Caltech with a prime contract with NASA to research and develop robotic space exploration missions. So this means I'm an employee or I'm managed by Caltech working on projects for NASA. Um, and if you think of NASA or JPL, you probably think of things like this. This is our latest Mars rover, Perseverance, looking at our latest uh, piece of technology, which is the Ingenuity, Ingenuity helicopter, um, and they are on Mars right now. Uh, these landed successfully just a few weeks ago, and um, I'm really, really excited to say that the first, that Ingenuity uh, just flew a couple days ago on Mars, so it's the first helicopter to fly um, on Mars. Um, and of course, to get here, you have to have a really high level of engineering brilliance. So here's someone in the space simulator facility at JPL testing thermal models, which is to say, uh, can this rover withstand the sun on Mars? Let's find out. Um, so whether it's looking at Martian environments or tracking Earth's climate and oceans, this is something that JPL is really, really good at. Uh, robotics, instrumentation and mobility for space exploration with a really high science return. Um, JPL is not known for medical devices. Uh, while the research and technology from JPL's tasks often enter into your daily life, uh, its benefits are usually more data-driven and a little bit more subtle. Um, however, when with the onset of COVID-19, uh, JPL recognized that there was a gap that needed to be filled and that we had the ability to help. Uh, so ventilators are devices that blow air or oxygen enriched air into the lungs of a patient and are life-saving devices in patients who are experiencing illness or complications with breathing. Uh, the amount of ventilators available against the rising need for them was a problem that we thought we could help solve. Uh, so a plan was set in motion to develop a very specific piece of technology that could potentially save lives of patients with extreme COVID sy symptoms without disturbing the current medical ecosystem by leveraging our experience in developing hardware for flight missions. Um, the process, however, needed to be a really lightweight version. Uh, usually space, mission, space missions take years of concept development and proposal work before any hardware is put together. Um, not to mention the rigorous amount of testing and VNV that goes into any flight hardware and software. Uh, there are many gates you need to pass before you become a flight mission, and that can take years, um, and some concepts never make it to flight. Uh, the concept or product in question really needs to be strong enough, strategic enough, and relevant enough to the science questions that humanity is asking in order to pass. Um, and most of my work at, uh, as a designer at JPL lands in these really early phases. Um, I'm embedded in various teams to investigate creative design and communication in concept and product development. Uh, I spend a lot of time with scientists and engineers asking them questions about their concept or product um, and unpacking large and complex systems uh, and hopefully finding ways to articulate them for convergence and clarity as the concept is being developed. Uh, so whether it's uh, being a part of the mission architecture core team where we gather subject matter experts to develop concepts or developing communication materials for proposal reviews at events called site visits or taking a really big idea and making it fun and small for the general public to learn and enjoy. Uh, my work usually has some mark making or visualization involved. Um, a lot of times it's rapid sketching and ideation for science systems, uh, operations processes, or uh, pieces of uh, mission architecture. Uh, and this is the same kind of contribution that I made to VITAL. Um, except that it happened in 37 days and with a few really key challenges. Uh, not only was everyone working remotely, except for a select few key engineers who worked with hardware on lab, uh, but JPL doesn't make medical devices. Um, so there was no, there was not a lot of expertise in that area. 
Uh, also, this needed to be done really quickly because we were trying to be timely and save lives. Um, and on that note, the device really, really, really needed to work. Uh, so this is a rough breakdown of the process. I don't really know when the timer started for 37 days. I'm sure someone could do the math, but I, I personally wasn't counting. Um, I have no idea how long I worked on Vital. If someone told me I worked on it for a year, I would believe them. Um, I'd also believe them if they told me it was just like three days. Uh, it was a really, it was a whirlwind of activity that involved a lot of moving parts um, and a lot of people. Um, and I, I also wanna emphasize that I was a small part of a large group of people with various different skill sets who contributed to the success of this task. Um, many, many people work day and night to get this done. And I really wanna call that out. There's no FDA approval without documentarians who know how to put together 300 pages of documents. Um, there's no concept or task without graphic designers who put together the strategic communication for funding. Uh, there are no labels or interface design on the ventilator without the visual and UI designers. And there's no one on lab if you don't have security or facility services. Um, there's no prototype at Mount Sinai in New York without transportation and shipping. Uh, and this is the same paradigm for any activity ha happening at JPL from concept to flight. Uh, the people at JPL really matter and everyone involved rose to the challenge of supporting this task during a really, really stressful time. Um, and I'd love to acknowledge that. So this is the vital team. Um, not everyone is pictured. <laughs> um, so with that said, I'll start talking a little bit about what my part on the vital team was. Um, so what you're looking at is a call with some doctors at Mount Sinai Hospital in New York. And the question I'm asking myself in the bottom right hand corner is how many roboticists and engineers does it take to help some doctors use a ventilator? And I'm really hoping that the answer to this question is zero. Um, and this is partially why I was brought on. Uh, a part of the process of creating the ventilator uh, that was a little different from normal was the part where people would have to repeatedly interact with the device, uh, troubleshoot it, and that it would be hooked up to a patient. Uh, this usually doesn't happen with space robotics. Um, so there were a few designers involved in designing the user interface to, to the device, but one of Vital's key requirements was that it needed to be locally accessible and really, really easy and simple to build and use. So this means it can be carried to remote locations, um, and easy to build with procured or manufactured parts, and it needed really minimal support. Um, so this meant no touchscreen, and that a lot of the buttons were physically hardwired into a board. Um, so there were some adjustments that could be made in terms of the labeling on the surface of the device, as well as some like uh, red, yellow light and tone signaling, but not that much in terms of a digital user interface, um, since the design had already been kind of baked in. Uh, so I was asked to make a user guide to support the required documentation and assist new users in the ventilator setup and usage. Um, so this is what I ended up making, uh, really straightforward, four pages that tell you how to set it up, how to put it together, and what buttons to push when, and what all the alarms mean. Uh, they can be printed out or looked at digitally, and this is really meant to describe how to use the ventilator. Um, but this is where I ended up. Um, at the start of the whole thing, when I was brought on, I basically had this. Um, this was a really, really early drawing of the interface by Michael Johnson, who is a brilliant mechatronics engineer at JPL and led a lot of the problem solving for the ventilator task. Um, so this was, there was a general sense of what the board and buttons would look like and what doctors would need to see and control. But a lot of the internal guts of the device were still being figured out. Um, when I was brought onto the project to make the quick start guide, the look of the interface was there, but the how to use it was not. Uh, most of the project at that point was just like a tangle of stuff uh, and it looked a little like this. Uh, different people working on different parts and figuring out different problems. Uh, this honestly didn't feel very different from my regular job. Um, there were, you know, lots of sort of siloed groups and it's kind of confusing. Uh, one of my big tasks is always to try to pull everything together in some coherent form. Uh, but normally I have some time and, and the opportunity to talk to people about their subject matter expertise. Uh, here I knew I didn't have the time to sit and wait for things to happen because by then it would be uh, way too late and I didn't wanna be like a passive observer who waited for someone to tell me like, this is how it works. 
make it like this. Um, I knew how precious time and sleep was. So if there was a way for me to contribute to giving engineers back their time and not you know, spend it explaining things to me, then I decided that I wanted to give them that. Um, so I did what I like doing best and I did some research and I drew some pictures. Uh, in this case, I researched the top five ventilators and read manuals for two that were meant for small at home use as well as one that was hospital grade. And I planned out two things. Uh, one, what were the uh, parts of a ventilator and how did they fit together? And two, those manuals were all small print, like 20 page PDFs. So what information would I absolutely need and how much could I reduce it without losing essential information? And I just started kind of sketching things. Um, I used whatever information I had access to to estimate what the ventilator might end up looking like as a little white box version and just sketching things out. Um, so these are obviously not the most beautiful sketches, but they served a really important role for me, which was just to like, try to figure things out as quickly and as iteratively as possible. There wasn't a lot of time to be precious about anything. Um, and part of why I like, really like my job is because I'm not that precious about anything, really. I just really want to solve the problem at hand. Um, and I think I got pretty close. Uh, so on the left is my, mo in the gray is my most developed guess for the ventilator. And the middle drawing is a corrected version from, again, Michael Johnson. Uh, and this particular diagram underwent many, many changes over time to account for a constantly changing parts list and evolving system. One of the weird benefits of having a rough sketch of a thing that doesn't quite exist yet is that you could take it to the person who has it all in their head and they could either say, uh, yes, that's it, or no, that's not quite right, or mm, I didn't see that before, let me think about this one more time. And they end up solving a problem that they might not have been paying attention to or no known existed. Um, so I think sketches are a really, really great first prototype. Um, it was really useful also to keep track of what version the ventilator was at, um, at the, you know, the latest one, uh, especially when there wasn't actually a put together version at this point, just sort of a disassembled list of parts. Um, and then really quickly, hardware started coming together along with some parts being ordered and printed or and 3D models were being built. Um, I started being involved in quite a few uh, video conferencing meetings, essentially just drawing the entire time. Uh, one of the most memorable conversations was one where many people needed to converge on things like, which way do the knobs turn on the device? So does right mean lock and left means unlock? What goes in this little hole? What do the handles look like? Um, and it seems like a kind of a silly thing now, but at the time, everyone was trying to be as socially distant as possible. And with time really working against us, sometimes the best thing to do was to just have everyone get on a video call and talk through as many problems and unknowns as possible. Um, and then I would draw it and send it out to whoever needed it, problem solved. Um, some of the harder conversations I was involved in uh, were more technical and invisible in nature. Um, there's how the, the device is put together, so the configuration and what buttons you push to turn it on and off. Uh, but then there are sensors and interactions and reactions between patient, ventilator, and medical professional. Uh, when you push a button or when a when a doctor pushes a button to trigger a sequence and a number flashes on screen and they need to make a judgment about that number and how to react to it based on their understanding of what the device is telling them and what they know about their patient, um, that's a really important moment. Um, I, I spend a lot of time at JPL listening to engineers and scientists try to solve some really complicated problems and my contr contribution is to help them think through their thinking by sketching out or diagramming their thought process to give some form to uh, the abstraction. Um, so I make a lot of these things and it never really gets old. There are probably hundreds of these kind of lying around somewhere. Um, I have a really deep level of admiration and respect for the engineers who turn these processes inside out and try to make something new that really works without having previous knowledge of creating medical devices. Um, it's always an extreme privilege to be able to help someone think through these concepts and communicate their thoughts. Um, uh, you, you have to respect people who show up to a room determined to think through something and gain a deeper understanding of it. Um, and eventually this became a bit of a pattern. If there was any convergence or clarity that was needed, people started asking for clearer and clearer drawings. So I went through a lot of photos sent from engineers asking if there was a way to show their process or set up more clearly or a way to communicate something to someone else that they couldn't be in the same room as. Um, and this was also a highly, highly iterative process. 
uh, with things changing and moving all the time based on feedback from doctors, um, the needs of the FDA, et cetera. Um, everyone was always willing to pick up really small, unglamorous tasks because we knew we needed to just keep it moving. Um, I think I made like 20 versions of this configuration diagram alone uh, just to account for the parts list, um, which was kept in a spreadsheet versus real time photos of uh, from engineers of what they were actually using. And this was almost purely for version control between the necessary FDA documentation um, and what was actually on the ventilator at the time. Um, and the product I ended up making was two versions of the quick start guide, one for pneumatic, uh, one for the pneumatic ventilator and one for the compressor ventilator, um, along with cards that were kind of uh, cheat sheets of settings and alarms. Um, and these quick start guides were also used as a content strategy for another design team on JPL to create a quick start app, which is a mobile walkthrough of the guides. Um, and after more than 100 applications, uh, NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory selected eight U.S. manufacturers to make a new ventilator tailored for COVID-19 patients. Um, this is an ongoing effort to make the ventilator as available and helpful as possible, not only in the United States, but worldwide. Um, I, put the, I put a link in the bottom of the slide here if you're interested in learning more. Um, the Office of Technology Transfer and Corporate Sponsorship or Partnerships at Caltech, which owns the patent and software for Vital, is offering a free license for the device. Um, and yeah, so if you want to learn more, please check out the website. Um, and uh, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to hear the story. And thank you to everyone who has supported the SOC. Um, I'm really excited to listen in to all the other speakers, and I hope you guys all have a great week. I'll hand it back to uh, the Figma folks now.